26th edition 2024 CEC line drop with table D3. Well, let's get going with how to use this table. Now, voltage drop calculations in table D3 of Appendix D are now versatile and straightforward once the basics have been established. In addition to uh, table 3 in Appendix D, the K value table, there is a second table located under note 2 of the opposite page, the F value table. Between these two tables is note 1, which provides four different equations and a breakdown of the letters used, V, V, D, K, within each. This symbol, shown in two of the equations, indicates less than or equal. How the symbol is applied when determining answers from these equations will be explained later in the examples. Now notice the title of table D3. It is for conductors operating at 75 degrees centigrade. Note 3 after the F factor table indicates an adjustment for the K value if the conductor operating temperature is 60 or 90 degrees centigrade. This conductor operating temperature is determined by identifying the lowest degree centigrade from the terminations and conductor insulation, the same process as what is used to determine standard conductor sizing. The diagram below will assist in determining the locations of circuit properties according to the letters provided in the equations. So here we can see V, which is the source, VD, which is the total line drop, I, which is the load, and L, which is the distance in meters. Now it's important to understand how each equation will be used, and I appreciate that many people find various ways of calculating line drop within this particular table. However, this tutorial is simply going to cover all of the equations and examples that use the equations provided in Appendix D. This first one is used to determine the total voltage drop of the conductors. The data required includes the conductor size, material type, electrical system type, and load amperage. Notice that the system voltage is not required for this calculation. This one, percent VD, is used to determine the percent voltage drop for the conductors. The nominal system voltage is required along with the VD of the conductors to determine if an installation is with the parameters outlined in 8102. So this calculation may need to be transposed to find the VD, depending on the question. Let's take a look at some more equations. This equation is used to determine the minimum conductor size. The number calculated is the K value. This number is taken to the K value table along with the relevant electrical system type information which will determine the vertical column used. An individual will start at the top of the column and then proceed down until a K value number equal to or smaller is present. Follow along this row to find the minimum conductor size. L. This equation is used to determine the maximum conductor length. The, conductor, the calculated number is the L or length in meters from the source to the load. This distance should be thought of as the distance of a cable or conduit, not the total combined length of all the conductors supplying the load. And finally this one, more of a basic elementary equation. V load is equal to V source minus VD. This equation is used to determine the voltage across the load. Although it is not present in the CC, it is still beneficial to remember its use in basic theoretical circuit applications of line drop. And we'll see through some of our examples here that this equation will come in handy. All right, first, the K-value table requires knowledge of the electrical system source, conductors, load, and wiring method. Is it AC or DC? Is the f power factor, what is the power factor of the AC load? Are the conductors copper or aluminum? Are the conductors installed in the cable or raceway? This information determines which vertical column of the table to use. What is the K-value? The numbers shown are the ohms per thousand meters of the conductor. The F value table requires knowledge of the electrical system source and the type of circuit. There are many types of circuits described in this table, most of which result in a factor of two. This factor represents the total number of current carrying conductors in the circuit. Only three phase, three and four wire systems use a factor of 1.73. This is due to the 120 degree phase displacement of each conductor resulting in different current magnitudes on each conductor at any moment in time. Well, let's see how we actually go about calculating the process. Follow this process here for line drop calculations to prevent missteps or misapplied numbers. Step one, determine which equation will be used. Step two, 
Write the equation. Step three, determine if any numbers need to be selected from the K or F tables. Step four, substitute numbers into the equation. Step five, complete the calculation. And step six, determine what should be done with the answer and if another equation is required. So what you can see here is that it's not as crisp and clean as you may want. It, it does require a little bit of know-how, but don't worry, the examples that are provided in the codebook and the equations provided are actually quite well designed. Finally, it's important to always check tables one to four opacity values to ensure the conductor determined from table D3 can actually carry the load. An easy rule is to always choose the larger conductor from table D3 and tables one to four when line drop is being considered. Well, let's take a look at a few examples because up to this point, it's really just a word salad, right? There's a lot going on. Okay, example number one. Calculate the voltage drop, voltage across the load, and the percent voltage drop for the following system. I have a 30 amp, single phase AC, two wire, 240, 90% power factor load, number four odd copper, tech 90 cable, 200 meters from the source to the load, and our termination temperatures are 75 degree. So we're asking for a couple different things, the voltage drop, the voltage across the load, and the percent voltage drop for the following system. Those are three separate calculations. First, let's find the voltage drop by using this equation, VD. So first, we need to use the K value table to determine the K value. Now it's number four odd, copper, it's cable, and it's a 90% power factor, which gives me a K value of 1.01. The next step is to find the F value. It is at single phase AC, which gives me a factor of two. I plug those numbers into my equation and I get 12.12 volt drop. Find the voltage across the load. Well, that's using my basic equation that was just the load is equal to the source minus the voltage drop. If we have a 240 volt source and 12.12 volts dropped, then that means that the source, or the load rather, gets 227.88 volts. Finally, let's determine the percent voltage drop. Well, the percent voltage drop is equal to the VD over the V. Well, the VD we determined was 12.12, and it's over 240. So 12.12 divided by 240 times 100 gives me 5.05%. Let's take a look at another example. Example number two, calculate the voltage drop, voltage across the load, and the percent voltage drop for the following system. 20 amps, single phase AC, two wire, 277 volts, 100% power factor load, 250 KC mil aluminum, ACWU cable, 400 meters from source to load, 75 degree termination temperature rating. Same process, find the voltage drop. Well, the voltage drop is gonna require a K and an F value. The K value with all this information is 0 0.277. The F value is two. I place them into the equation, I get 4.43 voltage drop. Find the voltage across the load, that's using our basic equation, I get 272.57 volts. And finally, find the percent voltage drop is 4.43 divided by 277 times 100, giving me 1.59%. Let's look at a third example. This one's a little bit different. Example three, calculate the maximum distance permitted between the source and load for the following system. 50 amp, single phase, AC, three wire, 120, 240, 80% power factor, 3-0 copper, RW90XLPE conductors, and EMT raceway, 3% maximum line drop, 75 degree termination temperature rating. So, the maximum, calculate the maximum distance permitted between the source and the load. Well, the first thing I kind of need to do is I need to calculate the maximum voltage drop. Now, why is that? Well, because if I want to find the length, look at the factors that I need to determine. I need to know what the voltage drop is times 1,000. Well, in order to work out the voltage drop, I need to then do this calculation first. So voltage drop is VD over V, and VD times VD percent over 100. So I am transposing this equation just to give me VD uh, as a numeric value. So 240 times 3 divided by 100, because they said it was 3% max, gives me a maximum voltage drop of 7.2 volts as per design. Now find the maximum length. I am using this equation L 
VD times the thou, and then I need to know the K and the F value. The K and the F value, K is based on all of the circuit properties, and F is based on the type of circuit itself. I plug them into the equation, and I come out with 261.81. This is the maximum distance between the source and the load at 3% line drop. One could always go shorter, which is why the less than symbol is shown. Example number four. Example number four, calculate the maximum di distance permitted between the source and the load for the following system. 60 amp, three phase AC, four wire, 120208, 90% power factor load, 300 KC mil, aluminum, RW90XLPE, conductors in rigid metal conduit raceway, and a 5% maximum line drop. Again, if I want to determine the length, the first thing I need to determine is the maximum voltage drop. So I'm going to use this equation, transpose for VD, which gives me 208 times 5, and that gives me a voltage drop at 10.4 at 5%. Now I'm going to plug it into my distance calculation. The maximum distance, L, is e e less than or greater or equal to VD times a thou. So find the K value. That's 0.25, based on the size of the wire, aluminum, raceway, and 90% power factor. 1.73 is due to it being three phase from the F value table. I plug it into my formula, and I get 400.77. So 400.77 meters is the maximum distance between the source and the load at 3% line drop. Let's look at another example. Example number five is calculate the maximum conductor permitted for the following system. So it's asking for something a little different. 20 amps, single phase AC, two wire, 120, 100% power factor, copper, RW90XLPE conductors and PVC raceway, 5% maximum line drop, 200 meter distance between source and load, 75 degree. Find maximum voltage drop. So the first thing I need to determine if I want to calculate the size of my conductor is to determine the maximum voltage drop. So VD, and I'm going to transpose it again, and that gives me six volts. Now what I need to do is move on to the K factor. The K factor is what allows me to determine the size of the conductor. So I'm going to find the maximum K value. K is equal to VD times a thou. So F is two, I plug in my values, and I get a K value that is 0 0.75. So the conductor will be chosen by selecting the correct column of the K value table, which would be copper, raceway, 100% power factor, then selecting the K value that meets or is lower than 0 0.75, right? This is less than or equal to. The installer is permitted to go smaller than 0 0.75, which is why this symbol is shown. In the K value table, the number 0 0.75 falls between 0 0.627, which is a number 2, and 0 0.792, which is a number 3. Remember, the K value chosen cannot exceed 0 0.75. So, the minimum conductor is a number 2. Now, it's important to understand that that number 2 log still needs to be checked. So, check table 2. I just know from experience that a number two AUG can easily carry a 20 amp load. And so for that step, that's really nothing we have to worry about. All right, well, let's take a look at the next example. And the next example we have here, number six, calculate the minimum conductor permitted for the following system. 100 amps, three phase AC, three wire, 600 volt, 80% power factor load, aluminum, RW90XLPE conductors and PVC raceway, 3% maximum line drop, 300 meter distance between source and load. So again, really what you're having to do here is figure out what are they asking? Minimum conductor. Okay, great. Well, for minimum conductor, I know I need to know, I'm essentially working out the K factor. Okay, look at the K factor equation. I need to know the voltage drop. Ah, so voltage drop means I need to first do this. So you're always looking at all of the equations that they provide. So the voltage drop here ends up being 18 volts. And when we have the 18 volts, we then feed it into this equation as well as the F factor value, which is 1.73. Now, after we complete that calculation, the K factor needs to be no greater than 0 0.346. 
So the conductor will be chosen by selecting the correct column of the k value table, then selecting the k value that meets or is lower than 0 0.346. The installer is permitted to go smaller than 0.346, which is why we have that less than symbol. So in the k value table, the number 0 0.346 falls between 0 0.299, which is 250 kc mil, and 0 0.347, which is number 4 at aug. Remember, we can't exceed 0 0.346, so 250 kc mil. We again check table 4 this time because it's aluminum, and a 250 kc mil can easily carry a 100 amp load. All right, well, let's continue on, and uh, the last two examples that we're going to take a look at here. So example number seven, calculate the minimum conductor. So I'm not going to read all of this, 60 amp, three phase, 80%, 3% voltage drop, all that good stuff. All right, so same process as before. We are first going to calculate the maximum voltage drop, which is 18 volts, for a 600 volt system at 3% line drop. Then we're going to calculate the maximum K value. We put in our K value equation. We find the F value, which is 1.73. And then we calculate it out. Now for this one, it's a little bit different. We end up with, over here, uh, K 3.85. So the 3.85 uh, we see here in the K value table, the number 3.85 falls between number 8 and a number 10. Remember, the K value chosen cannot exceed 3.85. So step 6, minimum conductor number 8 odd. We check with table 2. And in this situation, a number 8 cannot carry a 60 amp load. And this is exactly why we add the step in. See, always double check it against the tables. So, a 60 amp load in table 2, it says a number 6 is required in the 75 degree column. So what that means is that we, st we need to put in a number 6 aug for the distance that's being called for in this question. Remember, you do the calculation with your line drop, but you always check to make sure that the wire selected can carry the load. And in this case, it did not. We had to choose a number six. Well, let's do one more example. So this one, we end up with a number eight, uh, or sorry, example number eight, 200 amp, single phase AC, two wire, 40 volt, 90% power factor load, copper, TW60. EMT raceway, 3% maximum line drop, and 200 meters distance between source and load. We find the maximum voltage drop, which is 14.4, and that's taking 3% of 480. Then we introduce the K value equation again, find the F value, which is 2. And in this case, remember note 3 in table D3 for 60 degree temperature conductor termination, which is 0 0.95. And so I've just added that in there, the 0.95. The conductor will be chosen by selecting the correct column of the k-value table, then selecting the k-value that meets or is lower than 0 0.189. The installer is permitted to go smaller. And again, we've done that before. So in the k-value table, the number 0 0.189 falls between 0.166 and 0.192. So we choose the 300 kc mil, and we then check that against table two, and a 300 kc mil can easily carry a 200 amp load. So that's all the examples that I have for you for table D3 of the 2024 codebook. I hope this, bit, this has been an informative tutorial and that it helps you in navigating the calculations and equations for this new line drop method of calculation.